Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my podcast, Christian in Progress. My name is Samuel Perez, and just a little bit about myself, I am a former gay stripper. Yep, that's right, you heard that correctly. I left behind the homosexual lifestyle to walk with Christ. This podcast is all about how I do it, why I do it, and to help others like me, and educate those that aren't like me. (laughs) I want to talk, but I really want to talk, and be real about a life with Jesus and what that looks like in 2020. Nothing is off limits, and I want to be as transparent as I possibly can be. Now, before we get started, I want to let everyone know that this podcast is free to listen, and we do accept donations, and we have some awesome rewards and gifts for those who want to become patrons of the podcast. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Podbean or wherever, click on the description and you'll find the link to become a patron of the podcast, which means that you'll be making a regular monthly commitment to the podcast. And we also have my link tree where you can find resources to give through PayPal or Venmo or Cash App if you don't want to make a commitment monthly. Remember that we do this um, completely free so that you guys can be able to listen to and have a great time and not have to listen to ads or anything like that. So check those out definitely. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit about basically how I almost quit Christian university or Bible school as some people would call it. About two years ago, um, I had just started ministry and I was doing these small little get togethers um, that I, it was almost like just Bible studies for men. And then I started doing some for women too. And um, and then I started putting them together. <laughs> but I was doing ministry and I was also doing YouTube videos, which is probably the majority of where people have found um, this podcast and just my Instagram, social media is through my YouTube. I felt during that time like I needed to learn more about God's word and really understand it in a way that I had never understood it before. I had a lot of previous knowledge with the Bible because I had been born into a Christian family. So my parents, they always taught us Bible stories growing up and going to church every single Sunday since I can't even remember like (laughs) since I was a little baby I've accumulated a good amount of Bible knowledge and even becoming a born-again Christian this was probably um, around eight months before being born again I never liked reading any type of books and once I was born again um, I didn't even really have like a passion to read even the Bible, I had to sit down and I remember just thinking to myself, like, I really want to read this book because it's God's book and I'm, I'm in love with God and I want to learn more about God. But um, I lacked a lot of the passion of having to, you know, just actually sitting down and opening it up and reading about it. And I also lacked the education behind the context of Israeli culture or Jewish culture. And it would be very confusing when I would sit down and just read it by myself. And I actually did a prayer where I was in bed And I was asking God that he would give me more of a passion for his word and he would give me the strength to be able to read it and the wisdom to be able to understand it. So eight months in, I was already kind of reading the word of God more and I was doing Bible studies and I was listening to a lot of preachings and sermons. And I had a good experience of just kind of like, I don't know what you would call just like basic Christianity, like just church stuff and reading of certain books from the New Testament and stuff like that. But I really, really wanted to get a deeper understanding of God's word. And I also knew that I was probably going to be doing ministry for the rest of my life. Like I know that this is for sure something that God has called me into. It's not really something that I chose to do. It was something that God asked me to do and I wanted to be obedient. So I'm the type of person that I really, I really like to become prepared And I really like to give everything my 100%. And it's actually kind of a flaw of mine because sometimes I won't have time to give all of my projects or things that I'm working on 100%. Um, So I'll end up feeling really sad when it comes up to like 50% of like effort. And it's, it's kind of a weird flaw, but I wanted to give it my awe. So I was, I was kind of like, I remember it was December and I was leading these Bible studies and I just felt from the Lord that he wanted me to go back to school. He wanted me to go back to get an education that was a Christian education and to pursue some type of degree in ministry. But it was scary for me. Like I, I knew that going back to school was 
Definitely something that I wanted to do. I just didn't know if I would ever do it, especially if you guys haven't heard my testimony. I, I moved from Australia, um, and then before that, I was in New York, and then before that, I was in Miami. So at this point in my life, this was around two years ago and in December, so the year 2018, so December 2018, and I had no idea how I was going to go back to school. And... I knew that it was going to be a complicated process. I knew that I was going to have to, you know, dig up my transcripts and I didn't know if all of my credits were going to be accepted. And it was like a lot. I was very stressed out, but I I just knew, knew, knew that God really wanted me to do this. But at the same time, I was praying, I was fasting, I was asking people who had gone to Bible college, to Christian university, what their experiences were like. And I also didn't know what degree I was going to pursue. I was, I was really confused, but I, I just knew that God wanted me to do it. So I started to look into schools, and we're going to start right at the beginning, by the way, guys. <laughs> I'm going to talk about how I got into school, why I wanted to leave, why I wanted to quit, and all that stuff. So I started to look into schools online, and I was looking into a different, like, several universities. I was looking into some that were here in Florida, um, nearby, especially in Miami, because I, I love getting a campus education, but I also was not opposed to doing an online education, because... I in Miami there's not a lot of Christian universities I believe there's probably maybe only like two very big main universities and I just didn't feel like those were the right fit for me and I didn't feel peace from God when I was exploring the those options even though I tried to explore as many different options as I possibly could so then I started looking online to schools and I saw Oral Roberts University I think it was through like a Google search or something it was like I, I, I must have put into Google like a Christian universities Bible or something to that extent. And I was looking up schools like rated on some website or something like that. And I came across Oral Roberts University and I went on their website and I saw their campus and I was like, wow, this is a beautiful campus. If you guys have never seen the Oral Roberts University campus, it's beautiful. And I knew about Oral Roberts because obviously I'm a big fan of Catherine Coleman. I'm a big fan of Oral Roberts. Like, I love Billy Graham. I love like anything that has to do with revival in America. And I was I was very big on it at that time. I was listening to a lot of Catherine Coleman and the Holy Spirit and all that different stuff and researching that. Um, so I was going through the website and I was looking at the campus and I just thought to myself, you know what? I'm just going to I'm going to apply. And I'm I feel like if this is if this if going back to school is really from God and it's really something that he wants me to do and he really wants me to be in ministry then he's just going to open the doors he's going to provide the income that i need he's going to be able to do everything that's possible to get me into whatever school i need to get into i really just let it in in his hands which is something that i wish i did more often in my life like a lot of times sometimes i feel like i will do things by my own strength instead of just doing the things that God has asked me to do and being okay with that, <laughs> if that makes any sense to anybody out there listening. But this time around, I was just, I didn't really want to go back to school. It was something that I i knew that I, I wanted to do back when I lived in New York City because if, and that's why I'm a big, like, um, I encourage people to go back to school because when I was living in New York, it was horrible just living off of minimum wage and just feeling like people treated you differently because you didn't have an education especially because in america everybody has an education and if you don't if you don't have an education you look down upon and you can't really make any money um unless you you know you really stick with a corporate company for a really long amount of time and or you start your own business and stuff but i just felt horrible i felt terrible when i didn't have a college education and previous to, it's not that I didn't have a college education because you guys are, I'm going to talk a little bit about my, my credits and everything. I had gone to college. I had gone to a conservatory program, um, which was called New World School of the Arts in Miami. And I studied theater. <laughs> so if, if, if there are any theater peeps listening to this podcast, you know that there's not much you could do with a theater degree. And I didn't even finish the theater degree. I was in the conservatory program for two years after doing dual enrollment at a community college, which was Miami-Dade. And um, I, I went from dual enrollment straight into New World School of the Arts, and then I did the theater thing. And then after two years, I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I don't, I just don't have the passion for it. Like, 
I remember looking at my friend, um, I, have a, I had a very good best friend at the time and she was so passionate about just acting and theater and all these things and I thought to myself, well, I'm good at this, but am I passionate about it? Do I wanna do this for the rest of my life? And I was like, you know what, I don't. So I ended up quitting and I only got so far along in my bachelor's to the point where I almost finished my AA. And while I was living in New York, I was actually doing my AA um, online through a community college. So that's as far as I got in school. And I felt that, like I felt the impact of not having a degree, not having an AA and having to work these minimum wage jobs. And even sometimes people who have bachelor's degree, they still have to work these minimum wage jobs. And it's just awful. Our society is going a little bit crazy. <laughs> so um, that's the only experience that I had with college. Anyways, going back to the story, I was um, I was on Oral Roberts and I was on their website and I just decided that I was going to apply and that the Lord was going to open up the doors. So I remember I was on the website and I was um, filling out the application and it was just so easy. Like I just felt, I just felt this peace come over me. And, and one of the reasons why I mentioned this is because I, I really want to like, I really want to stress the importance of like doing things God, doing things of doing things God's way instead of doing things in our own strength. Like when you do things in God's plan and in God's way, it things are just so much easier than when you try to do things in your own strength. So I was going through it and it was so easy and I just, I just picked the degree that sounded like it was what I would be doing for the rest of my life. I think the the degree that I chose in the beginning was um, ministry and leadership. And I picked that degree and then I submitted the application. There was like a little fee. And um, the very next day I got an email uh, about a phone call that they wanted to have um, to be able to interview me before I get accepted into the school. It was like, it was quick. Like it was, it was so quick. And so I get on the phone, um, we do the interview, and I just remember the first thing while I'm on the phone, the lady is speaking and she's saying, so why do you wanna come to Oral Roberts University or why do you wanna do the online degree program? Because that was the one that I chose. And I was, I pretty much told her, well, I feel like this is something that God has been wanting me to do and something that I'm really passionate about is just doing ministry and learning more about God. and. I wanna be able to really study things for myself, not just people tell me what I should believe, but actually do the studying myself and do the research myself and be able to get it from voices that are not biased, that don't have like, they're not trying to manipulate me to believe in something that is denominational or something to that extent. So I really wanted to do my own studies and all that. And that's the answer that I gave to her. And at the end of the interview, she was, by the way, she was the nicest lady ever, like on the phone. It, she was so nice. Like, I don't know what it was, but I really felt like the love of God through the phone. It was the most craziest experience. And she just goes, well, do you want to pray together? Let's, let's pray about this together. And I said, sure. So she prayed with me during the interview and she's just like, Lord, I, I want you to, I, I want Samuel to be able to hear from you, to be able to hear if this is the school for him and this is and that, and if he's supposed to be here, whatever. And then at the end, um, which was amazing, and at the end, I was like just taken back. Like I remember hanging up the phone and ending the interview and just being like, wow, I feel like this is the school for me. I don't think that there's any other school out there that would call me, be so nice, just do this whole process so quickly, um, even with the credits and everything, I, I, I was telling her, I have credits from a community college. Would they be able to transfer? And she was like, yes, we can do that for you. All we need is like this document. And it, it was just so easy. And then at the end, it just like that kicked it off that she prayed for me and she aligned like with my stresses and worries. And, and it was it was a great experience. Like I, I walked away like I'm like, I feel like this is the school that God wants me to go to, that God wants me to get an education. So I kept praying and then eventually I got accepted into the school. At that point, I was like, you know, this is definitely God's will. I feel like, I feel so sure that I'm supposed to be going to Oral Roberts University. And I remember telling everyone in my life at that moment, like I was, I was so excited because I was gonna go back to school and start learning about the Bible and 
I was I was very very excited and I, I was telling everyone I was like God told me to go to this school like for sure for sure like I feel it and I felt that in my spirit so much so so I began to start my degree program online and at first I mean I was a little bit disappointed only because I was expecting that there is gonna be like actual teachers teaching me through video calls or something like that or maybe even um, like lectures that teachers were gonna be uploading or something to that extent but mostly the classes were just like you're gonna read this book you're gonna read this book and you're gonna read this book and then you're gonna take a quiz and you're gonna do a forum and that's the that's like the structure of all of the classes that I've taken at R. Roberts so in the beginning um, I believe the first class that I took it did have like lectures and stuff and there was like PowerPoints and then the other classes that I started to take after that semester almost got a little bit lazier <laughs> like it was just more just like read the book read the textbook do the quizzes and that's it <laughs> and um and i was also having a lot of trouble because um my expectations like were that they were going to accept all of my credits that i had done in community college including some of the credits that i had done in the in the theater school at, at, um, in new world university so when they told me that they were only going to accept i think it was like maybe 60 credits or something like that um, and they weren't going to accept some of my sciences. They weren't going to accept my foreign language credits. I was a little bit disappointed in that um, because I obviously I had spent I, at this point I was pretty much done with my entire AA. For those people who don't know what that is, is just like your core classes, like your math, your English, your foreign languages, your sciences. And I did not, I did not want to ever take those classes ever again. I spent years, I'm talking about, I had been in community college kind of enrolled in like one or two classes a semester, like for five years. It took me a really long time to finish my AA because I wasn't full time. So I did not want to go back. Um, I did not want to go to Or Roberts and also pay the class prices because Or Roberts is a, you, it is a, an actual university and they charge actual university cost so a class is like fifteen hundred dollars like just for one class and i was like i don't want to pay fifteen hundred dollars for a science class that i already took so i was a little bit upset at that and i tried to talk to um my i think they're called life coaches they're almost like your mentor they're basically your counselors and they're the ones telling you what classes you should take and all that and I was feeling a little frustrated, especially in the beginning that they weren't accepting some of that, but I was able to transfer over some credits and they approved them over petitions, but I still had to take like a science and a couple of foreign languages and also some physical exercise classes online, which is crazy. But anyways, I don't want to talk too badly about it because overall my experience was really good. I really liked the school. I was actually, I was really enjoying the teaching. I like, well, Actually, I was really enjoying the textbooks. I was really enjoying what I was being taught. Um, the, the books that I was reading were incredible. I, I was gathering up so much information and I actually have an app. They have an app with the textbooks that you can actually, the textbooks can be read to you. So I would take my textbooks with me to the gym and I would listen to them. And that's how I would study. And it was great because doing school online, even though I would have loved to have that campus, feel i would have loved to have the campus experience i kind of already did that with new world in theater but i've never done that like where i am like roommates and i'm sharing a dorm and i always wanted to have that type of real university experience <laughs> i love to experience things <laughs> if you're not familiar with my testimony which sometimes can be a very bad thing um but I, that's kind of how i learn it's just i love to go through experiences not just read about them and so i'm having a really good time you know with the classes and everything and i love everything they're teaching me um but that was throwing me off the credits thing was throwing me off because i'm like oh man this is more work like this is this just means that i'm gonna have to be in university a lot more longer than i am expecting to be in like i was expecting that i would graduate within like a year or maybe like a year and a half and Aura Roberts was telling me that I was gonna graduate in like maybe three years or like two years. 
Um, and I was like, man, I, I don't want that. Like, I want to graduate fast. I want to get things done quickly because I want to go right into ministry. I want to be speaking at conferences. I want to be doing all these things. I want to be able to be helping people around the world and, you know, doing my missionary efforts. And I want to be out there. I want to be out there. That was like my main goal. That was, that was the main mission. It's just like get get to studying, do all the studying, and then start doing mission work or start doing the things that God is calling me to do. So I didn't want to spend a lot of time studying. So that was also ticking me off as well. So now we have the credits and then we have the fact that I'm not gonna graduate very soon. And the classes were just not formatted in the way that I would have liked them to be formatted. I would have liked more one-on-one -on -one teaching or at least receiving some type of lectures instead of just reading books and books and books and books. Of course, if anyone has ever been to seminary or Bible college or Christian university, you would know that that's basically all that it is. Like university is just like books and books and books. Um, but I had a very distorted way of thinking. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't expecting that. So it had already passed maybe like four different um, mini semesters because how Or Roberts works is that you get a class and that class is six weeks long and you take it probably like you take two class, two six week classes at the same time. And then you take a two week break and then you take another six weeks classes and then you do that for summer and then you do that for fall and then you do that for spring. So I believe about four mini um, semesters had six week semesters had gone by. And at this point, I was just really frustrated with it all. I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And I was like, you know what? I just want to have a faster experience. I don't want to have to retake these science classes and have to take classes that I'm not interested in. And I also really, I didn't like the degree that I was in. I I was getting like leadership classes and more kind of like classes that had to do with pastoring and leading churches and church structures. And I wasn't interested in any of that stuff, but I didn't know that Or Roberts had more degree options. I just kind of picked the first one that like stood out to me, which was leadership and ministry and I was like oh I'm gonna do that and like and and also have a minor in evangelism you know so I was getting all these classes that I wasn't even really interested in and I just I had it I like called up my life coach or you know my um counselor for the school oh I believe they're called success coaches yeah success coaches I called her up and she was so nice I felt so bad like I was just having a really bad time at, during during this season of my life. I called her up and I'm like, look, I'm really unhappy. Honestly, I think I'm going to be switching over to another school. I feel like this is not the school that I need to be at. And it's just frustrating that you guys haven't been accepting my credits. And I, I don't like the structure of the, the classes, even though I am learning and everyone's really nice. Like, I don't know if this is the school for me anymore. And she was really nice. She was like, okay, well, um, she's like, well, I will take you out of the classes that you're in right now and just take a semester and think about it, explore other schools and all that. So that's what I did. I took the semester off and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to a school that's going to accept all of my credits. I'm going to go to a school that I'm going to be able to finish faster, that I'm going to get um, the degree that I, I want, you know, whatever. I don't know what, what was really going on in my head at the time. I, I had a lot of maturing to do and I've matured a lot since then and I still have a lot of maturing to do. <laughs> that's why this podcast is called Christian in progress because I'm in progress. <laughs> so I had heard about this school that was called Moody University and I'm sure a lot of people are familiar. It is a very great school, I believe in Chicago and I wanted to sign up for their online program and I called them and I their call experience versus the Or Roberts experience was completely different. Like it was very dry. It was very just like a regular university. Like I called them and they were like, hello, how can we help you? Like, this is what we offer, blah, 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 blah. And that's it. Like it didn't, they didn't pray with me. It wasn't particularly like a nice conversation where I felt the love of God, you know, it was just like a regular university. And um, I got off the phone and they had the online degree program that I wanted. And they told me that they would accept all of my credits. And so I was going to be able to graduate faster. And I was like, you know what? This is the school that I want to switch to. So I applied I got in, I was accepted, and I was gonna, I believe I even almost started my first semester. And during the time I was reading 1 Samuel, because I tend to pick books of the Bible in the Old Testament, and I just, I just read them, like I carefully study them, I really take my time with them. I read around like a chapter a day, and during the season I was reading 1 Samuel which is an amazing book, by the way. If you have not read 1 Samuel, it is one of, the one of the most exciting books in the Bible. 
And I was reading it and I got to the part where Saul is actually being rejected by the Lord as king and, and you know, they're going to bring in David as the new king. Saul decides that he's not going to obey the words of the Lord given to him by Samuel, which was to kill pretty much the entire village, including the animals and the offerings and, and everything. Like he was just so, supposed to completely devastate an entire village because they were at war. And that was the word that the Lord gave to Samuel. And Samuel gave it to Saul. But Saul didn't do that. Saul was like, you know what? I really like the animals and all of these things that these people had in this village. I'm not going to destroy it. I'm actually going to keep it. Like, I'll kill some people um, and some people I'll keep for myself. And I'll kill some animals and some animals I'm going to keep for myself. And when Samuel found out, he approached Saul and told Saul, why haven't you done what the Lord has told you to do? And Saul was like, what do you mean? Like, I took these animals because I'm going to make sacrifice and I'm going to do a big sacrifice for God. And all of this is for God. Like, I was thinking about God when I was doing these things. And Samuel's just like, well, God doesn't want your sacrifice. He wants your obedience. And this is um, 1 Samuel 15, 22. And he just kept repeating this. And he's like, since you didn't obey the Lord, like now the Lord is going to remove you and he's going to bring in a new king. He's going to bring in David. And obviously he didn't say David, but <laughs> so I'm reading these words. And as I'm reading these words, I am getting so convicted by the Holy Spirit. Like I am sitting there and I am bawling my eyes out and I'm just getting so convicted by the Holy Spirit. And just what that means is just like I felt in that moment, like the Holy Spirit speaking that to me. And trust me, you don't ever want the Holy Spirit speaking something that strongly to you. Um, it's it's a good feeling because you're hearing from God, but it's also a bad feeling because it's like, you know, you did something wrong. <laughs> and I was very aware that I was in the wrong. And it just, and he kept repeating that phrase to me. God's like, it, like the Holy Spirit's like, I don't want your sacrifice. I want your obedience. And this whole time that I had signed up for Oral Roberts University, the Lord had told me, I want you to go to Oral Roberts University. He made it so simple. He made it so easy. Even compared to Moody University, Moody University asked me for like transcripts. They asked me for like a bunch of documents that I didn't have. And I had to go looking for them in folders and opening up things from my past. And it was just like it, the, the, the application process for Moody was so much more complicated than it was for Oral Roberts University. And I'm not saying that they're a complicated school. It was just... For one of these schools, God was with me. And for the other school, God was not with me because he didn't approve of that for me. And so I really felt the difference. And even when I signed up for the classes and I was in the classes, I didn't like the way it was formatted and structured either. And so the Holy Spirit is speaking to me in this moment and I'm bawling and I'm crying. And I'm just thinking to myself, man, you know, like the Lord doesn't want my sacrifice he wants my obedience because what was my sacrifice my sacrifice was oh i'm going to finish and graduate faster so i can get into ministry it's a good thing god like this is what you want like you want me to help people around the world like you want me to spread my testimony you want me to speak here and you want me to do here and you want me to impact this person's life like this is for you god this is sacrifice sacrifice right but the lord was just telling me that moment he's like i don't want that like i never asked for that He's like, I just want your obedience. I wanted you to be obedient to where I put you in, to where I gave you peace, to where you were, um, you things were easier for you in that school. He's like, even though it's longer, even though it's going to take a, a longer process, it's going to be a longer wait time. But you're going to have to graduate like in three or two years, you know, more uh, slower than you were expecting. He's like, that's that's your obedient. You you have to be obedient to that. And so I felt so convicted. And as soon as I got that word, the very next day, I went to Moody and I was like, I need to, I'm sorry guys, I need to get out of the semester. Like I will not be attending the school anymore. And I had to call back Oral Roberts. And I, I was so embarrassed because I had told them basically that I didn't like the school and that I was leaving. Um, and it was, it was very humbling for me. I can just say that. Like it was very humbling, but they accepted me with so much love and acted like nothing had happened and I just I felt I felt great stuff from Oral Roberts I, I can honestly say like only great things from Oral Roberts and their administration and the people they have employed it's incredible like I don't know how they do it but they're doing a great job 
So I went back into the school and that was like the time that I almost quit, you know, Christian University. <laughs> I almost quit Bible college, not altogether, but I almost left the school that I was supposed to go to for a school that um, was not for me. And so I learned a very valuable lesson that day. I That day I learned that sometimes the things that we think we need to do for God is not the things always what God is asking us to do, even if it doesn't make sense. And for me, it just didn't make sense. Like I was like, God, why do you want me to be in school for so long? I don't understand. Like, wouldn't you rather me be out there talking to people and ministering to people and changing people's lives through the power of the Holy Spirit? Like, why would you want me in a room just studying and studying and studying? I didn't fully understand. But now I understand because my experience has completely changed. When I came back to the school, I decided that I was going to change my degree. So I changed my degree from ministry and leadership to um, biblical literature. And I was so excited because that's what I really wanted to do. I wanted like, I especially with my testimony when it comes to homosexuality and, you know, Greek and Hebrew, that's something that is like debated a lot. Like how to basically prove that the Bible is saying that that a marriage is between a woman and a man and that it's not saying that two men can be together and all those different things. And a lot of people, they always go to the Greek. They always go to the Hebrew and they say, oh, this is mistranslated or you didn't understand the culture. So that's really big for me. Like I want to understand the culture. I want to understand the Greek. I want to understand the Hebrew. And I didn't know if it was ever going to be possible for me to do something like that. But of course, when you do things God, God's way, it's always possible. And since Or Roberts was a school that God wanted me to go to, he knew that he was going to give me the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to take all of those things on, which I have been, which has been incredible. It's a testimony. So I changed my degree to biblical literature and I started learning all of the things that I really wanted to learn. Um, I'll just read to you guys some of the classes that I've taken. So I've taken um, a hermeneutics class. I've taken a teaching the Bible class. I've taken a Psalm and wisdom literature class. I'm doing right now currently Pauline Epistles and Jesus and the Gospels. I also did an Old Survey Testament class, uh, Old Testament Survey class. I did a Survey of New Testament class. So I've really been learning all about the Bible and I've been getting deep into Hebrew and Greek. And I believe next semester I'm actually going to be taking a Greek class, which they teach you Greek. And I'm really excited for that because that's one of my goals is to be able to fluently speak um, Hebrew and Greek. And it's one of my goals because I want to be that person that says, no, 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 you can't tell me what I do and do not know. Like, I know this stuff. Like, I spent years studying this stuff. And I fell so in love with just the concept of understanding the Bible and biblical literature and hermeneutics and exegesis, like all these things, like studying really, like getting deep down into the context and the second temple and um, all of these like incredible things that I'd never been taught before in a church. Like, you know, it and it actually surprises me a lot that a lot of these things aren't taught in the church because I feel like these are things that should be taught inside of the church. Like we don't just need to be talking about the things that are relevant to our lifestyles, but in order to really understand the characteristics of God and in order to understand like what we believe in, we should be understanding the context of everything, the context of Judaism, the um like, uh, what about Jesus's life, how he interpreted things, how the gospels were written, at what time were they written, which gospel was written first, um, which books were written first, which books are canonical, which books, books are um, ap apocryphal, you know, all these different types of things. These are things that we should know. And if you approach a regular Christian, someone who's been going to church on Sundays and is just, you know, just a regular Christian, you ask them some of these things that I'm learning, they would say they don't know those things. And to me, it's increased my faith. I'm not saying it's for everyone. But I'm saying I think it's definitely something that we should be teaching more in regular Sunday service church. But I know it's not always sometimes the thing that is the most popular. And that's also another issue is that why do we feel like the church needs to be popular? Like why do we need to be covering things that the world deems to be popular? I believe that biblical literature is the most important thing um, in our lives. Why? Because it is who God is. Like this Bible is trying to tell us how God loves us. It's trying to tell us characteristics about God. It's trying to tell us the redemption story. And it's trying to tell us the good news, like how God has been good to us. What could be more important than that? I don't, I, I, I know there's a lot of things in life that we have to face, but 
I think if we face them with God's word, we are so much better off than uh, facing them with the wisdom and the knowledge that this world wants to give to us. So that was my little rant. But so I, I started really getting into biblical literature and I really loved it. And actually, speaking of, I was like, you know what? I think I want to continue my degree. I think I want to go to grad school. And that was like shocking. And then I was like, you know what? I don't just want to go to grad school. I want to get my doctors. <laughs> like I want to get, I want to become a doctor. Like I want to be, I want to get my PhD. I don't know if it's the same thing. I haven't really researched that yet. I'm getting there. But um, I want to take it to the, the farthest reach of education that I can. And I believe that that is like one of my purposes in life because I had to, and, and obviously none of this was cheap. None of this was free. I had to pay for this education. I didn't even get um, financial aid until actually this year. And I can't imagine people wanting to learn about the Bible and having this passion that the Lord has given me and not being able to do that because they don't have the funds or not being able to do that because they live in a third world country or something like that. So I think one of my purposes in life is to be able to take what I've learned in Oral Roberts and to share it with the world for free. Um, one of the people that I look up to the most is um, Ravi Zacharias. He just recently passed away. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, but that's what he did. He would put on debates and he would go to universities and you could go there for free and you could learn something and you could learn something from the education that he got, you know, all these books that he read. He would share freely this information and and that's something that I really feel like a calling to do. And I think it goes far beyond just a bachelor's degree. I think it goes on to a grad, you know, a, a graduate's degree and then beyond that into a doctorate. And, and I really feel passionate about that. So it's funny that I wanted to finish so quickly and move on. And now I actually am really enjoying learning. And I can't even imagine a time where I'm not going to be learning. Because even if I do get a doctorate and I'm living in that way, um, whereas I'm constantly studying, like I, even if I, even if I do get a doctorate, I believe that I will even still always be continually learning new things because that's just how it is with God. Like you never fully, truly understand everything about God. And I think that there's so much fun and there's so much wonder and like trying to understand all these things about God and about the Bible and debating this and debating that. Like, I don't know. I just... I have such a passion for it, and I've, I've really gotten into it way more than when I first started. So to those people who are listening to the podcast and being like, how does this relate to my life? I would say, you know, if you've been thinking about going to Bible school or going to a Christian university, definitely my recommendation all the way is Old Roberts University. <laughs> but that's just for me. You might be wanting to go to Moody University. You might be wanting to go to um, Liberty University or even, you know, wherever. Uh, somewhere that's close to you in your hometown. Um, But I really do feel that if God is calling you to do that, that he's going to make the way. Not only did God make the way for me in understanding, um, like in giving me knowledge and wisdom, but also giving me peace throughout the application process, giving me the right school, like just randomly coming up on Oral Roberts University. Like I had, I didn't even know that existed before I applied. I had no idea like that Oral Roberts University was a thing, you know? So I believe that if you're being called to a higher education um, through the Bible or through a Christian university, I say go for it. Do not be scared. Um, I don't know where I would be today if it wasn't for my education, if it wasn't for those hermeneutic classes and the survey of Old Testament classes. Like My understanding and my knowledge of the Bible would be so misconstrued right now. Sometimes listening to preachings on YouTube from several different people who you don't know and they don't know you it can like it has its it has its positives where you learn something you walk away you feel good you know but it also has its negatives where it's like you know was that really for you is that something that you really need to know right now you know and and just getting getting these bits and pieces from all these different leaders and teachers and that can be really good but it can also be really bad because then you're not getting like almost like a like a full vision of everything that they have to teach or I don't know, it's kind of complicated. But I would say that if you want to learn more about God's word and you're hungry for it and you and you feel like God is calling you to it, do it. Because it's one of the best decisions 
that I feel like that I feel like God has led me to do and I don't know where I would be without it and I'm so glad that I was able to just recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit in that moment to tell me to go back to school and then also to tell me to stay in school and it has been tough I can tell you that the assignments are not easy I have to read about like in six weeks I have to read like five books um, watch videos do a bunch of assignments I have essays forums that I have to do but you know what I, I wake up every single day and I am so excited because every day I know I'm gonna learn something new and every day I get to know something new about God that I didn't know before I get to know more about the culture I get to know more about the Middle East I feel so much smarter <laughs> when I tell people that I'm studying the Bible and that I know about things in the, in the Middle East like I know about um, Israel and Palestine and Palestine and like all of these different in Rome and all, all of these history tidbits people are like wow you're so smart you know like I feel so good about myself and I'm so glad that I went through this process so I just I hope that people who are listening to this podcast um, you can walk away but just whatever God is calling you to do do it because you will not regret it if you feel peace if you feel like this is something that is going to be hard or maybe going to be taking a lot of time like don't shy away from it don't run away from it just go go to it because it is going to be probably the best decision that you could ever make like with any decision that you make with God is going to be a good decision. Anyways, there are so many other things that I could talk to you guys about with my experience at Oral Roberts. Um, so many different topics, but I will leave that off for another podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and for listening to my little story time video about how I almost quit Bible school. Um, and I hope that it's impacted you. I hope that that Bible verse, um, you can actually go back and read it for Samuel 15, 22 and see how that can apply to your life today. Um, like think about it. Think about some things that maybe you've been doing as a sacrifice to God and God's just been asking you to be obedient to the last thing that he told you to do. And a lot of us have those moments where we have to kind of reevaluate. We have to self-evaluate and say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Am I doing things out of sacrifice or am I doing things out of obedience? And so that's what I really want people to walk away from and listening to this podcast and this episode. And I hope that it's helped you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening. And there will be a new podcast out next week. And I hope you tune in for that. And if you haven't already, check me out on YouTube. Um, just type in my name, Samuel Perez. And you can also find me on Instagram, Samuel Abraham P. Um, I recently made a TikTok, but I believe they're going to be banning it. So I'm not sure <laughs> if you can find me on there anymore. Um, also, Samuel Abraham P, which is my name. You know, Samuel Abraham. Abraham is my middle, my middle name. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Peace out, guys. I hope you have an amazing day. I love you all. Bye.